let's take a, a look at another inequality here. Now, unlike the last one, we don't have everything on one side, but Kelly, you did say, do we need to move the fraction over? And you're right. So what we want to do, let's go and keep this guy here and subtract this fraction over. Make sure you pay attention to your inequality symbol. All I did was move that guy over. But what I need to do, according to the steps that we had on the last video, the last page, was I need to create a single fraction. Well, this kind of goes back to the stuff that we were talking about last time, or a few days ago. I got to get, a, have to get a common denominator. Uh, what are the factors here for this guy? X plus four and X minus two. This guy's just X plus four. So what factor is he missing? X minus two. He's missing the X minus two. Now, there was a question that was asked earlier about why can I not just go ahead and clear the fractions here? Well, the reason we can't is because this is not an equation. If I wanted to multiply everything times x plus 4x minus 2, I don't know whether that expression is positive or negative, and so I wouldn't know whether or not to flip this inequality symbol. So if you multiply both sides times just a number, you can do that. But if it's a variable expression, we can't do that because of the uncertainty, because of its how it varies, because it has variables in it. So now I have one <coughs> large fraction over x plus 4, x minus 2. What's in that numerator? 3 minus x plus 2. 3 minus x plus 2. Right, 3 minus x plus 2. Make sure that you do distribute this negative 1. And of course, this is still greater than or equal to 0. I haven't really done anything there. When I combine like terms, what do I have? X minus it's negative x plus 5, right? Over x plus 4, x minus 2. Now, we have to be very careful when I go to my sign chart here. But I'm going to help you with that, so it's not going to be a problem. <coughs> Notice that I have three factors here. I've got the factors in the numerator and these two guys in the denominator. So when I write these factors out, negative x plus 5, x plus 4, and x minus 2. And then I look at this expression as a whole, negative x plus 5 over x plus 4, x minus 2. How many, how many critical values do you see that I'm going to have here? Three. I'm going to have three. <coughs> We've got to figure out where these guys are so we can put these in the right order. So what are, what are those critical values here? <coughs> uh, this guy would give me a positive five. This is negative 4, and this guy is positive 2. So when we put these guys in order, we have negative 4, then 2, then 5. Do you all agree? All right, now it's time to do the sign analysis. Who's the guy that makes this guy 0? Negative x plus 5. His is 5. What kind of signs do you have on the left side of this? What's the coefficient here? Negative. Since the coefficient is negative, you know if we were to graph this guy, he'd be going down, which means he goes from positive values down to negative okay, so values. Okay, that's just right? based on whether the coefficient is positive or negative. Yes. Okay. And if you're not sure, pick a number on the left side of 5. Pick 0. If I plug in 0, what kind of number do I get? Negative. No. If I plug in 0, I get positive. positive. If I pick something greater than 5, what do I get for this guy? Negative. So that's why it's positive on the left and negative on the right. What about x plus 4? Who is his critical value? Who's his gatekeeper? Negative 4. Negative 4. So that's 0 right here. Mm -hmm. Now since this has a positive coefficient, what signs are on the left? Negative. And what's on the right? Positives. 
and x minus 2. Who is his gatekeeper? 2. two. So we're 0 at 2. This has a positive coefficient, so what are your signs on the left? Negative. And what are they on the right? Positive. positive. Now I know that we have division and multiplication here, but remember that division is a form of multiplication. So if you have a positive and a negative and a negative, what's that sign? Wait, what? Division is a form of multiplication. So when I look at this, I'm really looking at, if I multiply these signs together, what happens when you multiply a positive times a negative times a negative? Positive. I get positive. Now I've got a <coughs> positive. Now where is this zero? Is this guy in the numerator or denominator? Denominator. Denominator. So what's a positive divided by a zero? So we're going to write undefined. What about positive, positive, and negative all together? Negative. Negative. Positive, positive. This zero comes from my denominator, so what is that? Undefined. We're undefined when you have those gatekeepers in the denominator. Positive times positive times positive. positive. This is all positive. <coughs> zero. This guy was in my what? Positive. It was in my numerator, so zero divided by positives is what? zero, and then negative factors with po two positives is what? Negative. Negatives. Now what was I looking for here with my sign chart? What did I want? I wanted greater than or equal to in this example, so that meant I was looking for what? The positives. So right here and right here. My question for you is this. Can you ever include the endpoints that are undefined? No. no. Can you include endpoints that are zero? Only if what? If you can be equal to zero. So how do you translate this guy, which you see here, into interval notation, keeping in mind that you have the equal to part? Negative infinity to negative four. Negative infinity to negative four with what? Parentheses. Parentheses. I'm going to join that, union that with what? Open parentheses, Open parentheses two. two to what? But here, since I get to be equal to, I'm going to put a closed bracket on that guy. What do you say about that? Notice what I didn't have to do. I didn't have to actually <laughs> plug in any numbers here to get the <coughs> signs, because the signs, that's all that matters. Now, some books will say, hey, you've got your intervals here, pick negative 5 and plug it into the original inequality and see if it's true. Y you could do that, but that to me seems like a lot of work. If I just look at the signs, because I know what my gatekeepers are and I know what they mean, I can save myself a lot of time and just use my sign chart right here, my sign analysis. Of course, you can also put this in your graphing calculator, but you've got to be very careful about this, so let's check this out real quick. Wait, so whenever you say zero divided by positive, I've got positive. Now, this is divided by, right? Because x plus 4 is in the denominator. So positive divided by 0 uh, is undefined. Uh, Positives divided by, this is coming from the 0 in the denominator. That's undefined. When my numerator is 0, 0 divided by positive factors is a 0. Okay. Now, if we check real quick on the graphing calculator. I've got 3 divided by the whole quantity. Make sure you use parentheses correctly. x squared plus 2x minus 8. My logic symbol, or my test symbol, is greater than or equal to 1 divided by the quantity, x plus 4. <coughs> How many sections am I supposed to have? Two. I'm supposed to have 2. Let's see if that shows up here when I graph this. Now, I'm going to pause it right now. You see it's going from negative infinity to negative 4. And it's taking a little break right here. And it should pop up again right here when x equals 2. So wait for it. And there it is. And then it stops at 5. So that matches up completely with what we say our answer is.